So this short video is about establishing the correct latitude and longitude in twin motion and making sure that that data matches up with how we've been mining data and other programs like Revit and Formit. So this project that we've been working on um, in this introduction to digital design class here at Jury, um, we've been starting uh, collecting our site data with Formit. Um, so that is sort of our baseline information. Um, and what I've done, so this is our site in the Himalayas, um, just keeping things uh, not fictional, but you know, abstract and kind of more amusing than just down the street. Um, we have established our location. We've brought in the terrain. I have turned on the shadow system. So let's take a quick look at that. And I know my time of day and my time of year, right? So I have all of this information. Um, available to me. Let's let's just go ahead and set this to something a little more reasonable. Let's do June um, of, let's set this even to the correct year. Uh, it doesn't matter a lot, but just, just for a good measure, right? So let's set that up. Time of day, 10 a.m. Um, and nothing particularly relevant about 10, 10 a.m. other than the shadows from, you know, I like to build these little sundials on, on the sites as I'm doing this. So this is just sort of a um, uh, a, th a thin block that's sort of representing where we're planning on putting this small building on the site. And I know that this shadow at 10 a.m. in June is heading directly towards this uh, road system right here. And that's sort of my baseline center. That's, that's simply my check to make sure things are coming together correctly in twin motion. So in twin, I need to, to establish the right latitude and longitude um, and the right time of day, time of year, and I should see a really similar shadow pattern. So let's look at how to do that inside of Twin. So there are two locations inside of Twin Motion, uh, there are two, two locations within the program that talk about location in reality. So let's cover both of those. So the first one is under context. And under context, what we're going to see is right here under urban, um, this is not going to modify my latitude and longitude. This is only going to bring in locational content, okay? So I do that, it starts us off in Paris where the program team, the nice kids for Twin Motion are located. Um, I click this little uh, marching at button here to, to grab a zone or a location. I can have more or less information by zooming in or out, but essentially I hover over what I want Let's zoom in just a little bit so it doesn't take too long to grab this data. Hit the grab button and, and just depending on your internet connection, speed, all that kind of stuff, pretty quickly it is going to grab whatever data is available for that location, specifically streets and buildings. You're, you're going to see I usually this doesn't include terrain, at least not that I've seen. Feel free to comment on that if I'm wrong. But usually this kind of places things on a flat site, whatever buildings, whatever content is available for that location. This does not set latitude and longitude. And in this particular case, that is what I'm looking for is setting latitude and longitude. So let's go file and let's open up the scene that I've been working on. So control file open. Jury classes 223. That's my site project. We don't need to save that one. So here's our site. Here's our human. And you'll notice um, right now, the shadows seem to be moving in the right direction, which is kind of a plus. Um, let's go ahead and turn my speed up again really quickly here so I can zoom in and out just a little bit faster. So shadows are moving in the right direction. Um, but you know, if I look at the sun data, um, it's not the right time of day as it relates to format. So if I set this to 10, then I know, okay, things are not right. But I really haven't done anything inside of Twin Motion yet to set my latitude and longitude. And that's where I need to go first. So that is different from this urban setting here. It actually comes down to our location tab, which totally makes sense. So I'm going to go to location. And from here, I need to hit my little search button. And this is more generalized, right? I can take this, um, I can zoom in and out. Um, I can drag this little pointer around, but the easiest thing to do typically is just enter the search. I'm just gonna type Himalaya. 
And let's go right to something that I know is close. Himalayas and Nepal. And if you notice, that's, I mean, there's not a lot of data here. Um, so it's a little bit more tricky to work with. But I know in terms of my latitude and longitude, this is roughly the correct location. Right? So then what I need to do next is still with my time of day set correctly around 10 o'clock, I should be seeing my shadows falling towards the road. But there's one other thing that can happen, and that is the translation of the geometry from software to software. Okay, I know when I brought Formit, specifically this site, into Twin Motion, it has an odd translation that happens where True North uh, adjusts by 90 degrees. And I know that simply from experience, and I also know at 10 o'clock, these shadows should be not coming to this side, but they should be falling down the site towards these rows. So if I change my true north at this point to 90 degrees, I know I'm getting something in terms of my shadow pattern that very closely resembles what I'm seeing right here inside of Formit. And I could certainly get a little bit more specific uh, in terms of how I run these different examples and run these tests to make sure that they match perfectly. But time and practice tells me, yeah, I think pretty much I've got my latitude and longitude correctly. If I have my month set to June, it was set to July, and my true north adjusted by 90%, uh, or 90 degrees, excuse me, um, I should be locked in with the correct latitude and longitude and the correct orientation for north.